I have boundaries, but I wouldn't say they're clearly established and I'm still figuring out where and what they are. What guidance do you have for looking more into that? A fantastic question, because the boundary question is something which is often answered incorrectly. Boundaries are maintained. Get this single sentence. Your boundaries are maintained and established upon your self-worth or your perceived self-worth. And to understand what self-worth means requires three different approaches. We need to look at firstly the self-worth that we inherited from our family of origin story. Secondly, the self-worth that we see mirrored back to us in our present reality. And thirdly and finally, the standards of self-worth that we expect to experience as we continue our life. Past, present, and future. Think about it. You don't establish a boundary around something that you don't care about. The reason that nations have borders and museums have security guards and even the fact that we wear clothing which covers up our vulnerabilities is because we care about that thing, that person, that entity or that nation. We want to establish a limit where no one can go further than this without being potentially at risk of danger and everyone knows, okay, that wall, if we think back to anthropological times, you know, ancient history, no further than the stream at the end of the canyon, this is our people's land. And you teach the young boys and the young girls that we do not cross that stream because that's where the wild beasts live. And then as we sophisticate this collective and individual identity, we have family units, we have individual identities, and we even have this principle of defending our psychic space. Every possible example that I can bring forwards has that same undercurrent. We can only establish a boundary and we're only willing to defend a boundary against the attacks of the world if there's something inside there that we value. If you don't value yourself, you won't maintain boundaries and that's why we self-sabotage. It's an unconscious shadowy question because of course you value yourself enough to not go out naked in the streets and put yourself in harm's way. But you might not value yourself enough to put down your phone after the second hour in a row of scrolling, or maybe a few too many scoops of the ice cream. The standard that we apply is inherited, mirrored, and expected, past, present, and future. And today we need to discuss, hopefully, a very practical answer to this question of how to stop self-sabotage by truly establishing a robust sense of self-worth. Let's take it from this past, present, and future example, because again, I can nearly guarantee that if you struggle with maintaining a gym routine, if you struggle with attracting the wrong kinds of relationships, or maybe staying in a difficult and damaging relationship for too long, or even just speaking up your boundaries around, I'm not available to come out on this day, and no, I don't want to go on a date with you, and actually, hey, I've been working here for a year and a half and I could do with a pay raise, any kind of level-headed, everyday boundary, if that's still a struggle for you, or if you struggle with things regarding self-care like substance limitations, overeating, undereating, going to the gym, bedtime, basic, basic things. I am almost certain based on the work that I've done with clients and based on all I've studied that you peel that back and it's going to be a self-worth issue related to either the past, the present, or the future. Let's go into it. It might be a bit of a triggering conversation. I'm on your side. I'm not trying to get on your case. I know that when I'm working through my own self-sabotages, I tend to look back towards the past and look towards the future. Those tend to be my preferences, but sometimes it's completely present-based. Let's go into it. Number one big chunk, it's the past. It's the family of origin story. If you were a little boy or a little girl that wasn't encouraged to look after their body because there was always junk food in the house and there was always arguing and conflict, you are unlikely, unless something happens, unless there's some miraculous outside influence, you're unlikely to develop a standard of self-worth as an adult which values healthy organic food and non-combative, non-violent relationships. 
It might be subtle. It might be a standard that you accept to a certain point and then suddenly your inner narrative is triggered. Maybe, for example, let's make it kind of silly. Let's imagine that you have a standard of water quality that you find acceptable. This is quite an interesting example to go with. Let's imagine that you grew up having always drank a certain quality of dirty water that's kind of a light brown. You get used to drinking this light brown, muddy water, but your parents told you these stories of, well, you should be grateful, at least we're not drinking 100% brown water, and this is just a little tint of dark brown sediment. You should be happy. And occasionally when you were going out and about and your friends would show up with their water bottles, you'd notice that some of them had completely clean water. And you didn't feel like that was something that you could access for yourself. It's like, hmm, that's their, that's their water, not my water. You go back to your family, maybe you had a moment when you were six of, Joey had clean water and as well, maybe Joey's family, blah, 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 whatever the family story is. The point is, we grow up with a certain standard where we're used to consuming, in this case, we're literally used to consuming all of that dirty energy. We literally take it into our body and that's the standard that we build ourselves from. The family of origin story is the energetic equivalent to drinking dirty water for most people who are going to be watching a video like this. A number of people will have very, very polluted water, horrific childhood experiences, openly toxic and abusive family dynamics, and things that no one deserves to go through. Other people watching this video will have a pebble or two of dirt. Maybe it's just a self-worth issue regarding body image or the way that you relate to yourself in a gym environment or a food environment. Most people tend to be in this middle ground where the sediment that we inherit, the self-worth, how much we are allowed to nourish ourselves with, is polluted in regards to finances, in regards to health, in regards to relationships, career, aspiration, even just how we look after ourselves at bedtime, as I mentioned earlier in the video. The job that we have as adults is to recognize the moments in our past where we were given low self-worth anchors. We were given many different repeated stories of you are only worth this much, and therefore the boundary of your identity does not go past this point. We are a family that only shops in these stores. We don't go to those ones. Those ones, they're for rich people. Or we're a family that only believes in this type of political ideology. Or we're a family that believes in a certain relationship to intimacy and romance. The boundary of what, ex of what is acceptable is laid down and established and defended on our behalf by our parents. And if we don't come to the overall awareness moment as an adult that the boundary that we inherited around our own identity need not be the boundary that we maintain rigidly for the rest of our life, our present reality will then dictate our future. This is why trauma work and unplugging from the condensed, congealed energetic blockages through things like somatic therapy, in addition to working through narratives with alternative therapies like existential approaches, humanistic approaches, or even depth psychology approaches, are all very useful for plucking us out of that inherited belief system, that boundary around identity, that boundary around possibilities, and ultimately all of the things that were given to us but we need to hold on to. It then moves us into the present. Why can we not maintain our own boundaries, or maybe why can we not figure out where our boundaries actually are in the present? Well, yeah, some of it's maybe wrapped up in the past, but the present is very much indicated by our current relationships. Our relationship to ourself and our relationship to other people. I want you to imagine that you have three close friends and all three of these friends treat you differently when it comes to going out and spending money. Let's imagine that you have number one friend who only feels comfortable going for completely free experiences. Let's imagine that energetically for the sake of the argument, they're equal experiences energetically. It's not like one's better or worse if you have a certain preference towards a certain day out being better than the other one being worse. Let's just eliminate that. We're going to go with the monetary value for the sake of simplicity. Let's imagine that you have three friends. Friend number one will only hang out with you if you're doing something that costs both of you zero dollars. Friend number two is kind of willing to spend up to a hundred dollars. And friend number three is willing to spend a thousand dollars on a day out 
you do walk in the park with friend number one, you do a nice restaurant meal together at one of your favourite places for number two, and number three is you both book a last minute flight to a really cool destination that you both dream about, and you spend the night there before flying back in the morning. The zero dollar, hundred dollar, and thousand dollar option. Why is this relevant for a video like this? In these relationships, your self-worth and your identity is partly your responsibility. It's you with yourself and your own reflection in the mirror alone. But we need to understand that as social creatures, the kinds of friends that we keep and their relationships to us, their standards of what we're deserving of, also heavily influence our feeling of boundaries and identity. The difference between the zero dollar friend who maybe has some limiting narratives around we shouldn't spend money on ourselves because we need to spend money here and here and here, but not on us. You spend too much time around a person like that and you will start to believe that you are not worth spending money on and you will establish a boundary against your own enjoyment. You will establish this rock solid stone wall against anything that would possibly require money, theoretically, if you spent too much time with this person alone. They will rub off on you, in the same way that if you spent time with the $1,000 date kind of friend, you're going to be in the mood to go and do all kinds of unnecessary things just for the sake of, I'm worth it, and my boundary actually is the opposite direction. I don't do whatever, I don't do cheap things because my boundary is something which is a higher standard of luxury. It's an oversimplification. I hope the teaching point is clear. It's not about money. It's not about expenses. It's about the feeling of worth, which is typically associated with, I can't spend any money because I haven't got money and I've got lots of money to spend and money's not an issue. Most people can relate to that kind of experience in one way or another, but it's deeply correlated with feelings around how much love, how much attention, how much value, how much creativity do you have reflected in the different relationships in your life? How much conflict? How much pain? How often are you shouted at? How often are you belittled? How often are you shamed? How often do you need to run away from conflict? How often do you self-isolate because people are being mean to you? This is where your self-worth gets anchored in the present by the people and the environment. It's often inherited from the family story, and then we attract new people into our life that feel very similar to how they felt before. But it leads us into a tricky space because the boundaries for our future and the expectations that we have for our future, based on our current self-worth, rooted in our family of origin self-worth, tend to be the same but for more years ahead. You're used to spending no money on yourself and being only around friends who will never spend money. It's likely that you imagine that 10 years into the future, your timeline is going to be pretty much the same in the same way that if someone's used to spending a lot of money on themselves, their boundary is luxury and not going for cheap things, not spending time on things which are worthless, those forks in the road start to diverge greater and greater and greater. We remove the money principle, we focus on the energetics. At the deepest level, your self-esteem, your perceived self-esteem, your vision and your dream for what you could do in life will start to influence the boundaries that you have in the present. For example, for myself, at the time of recording, I am four and a half going on five years sober from drink and substance. I expect and I intend and I bloody well am going to hold that boundary for mul multiple years in the future. I've got the pressure, the healthy, inspirational pressure of I can imagine myself getting to my 10 year sober anniversary, therefore... My standard of self-worth is already influenced by that perceived standard of future self-worth that I'm the kind of guy who's going to do 10 years sober and make the most of that energy, make the most of that time and honor my body as the sacred vessel which I get to experience. But that story is very different from being raised in a family where the first time I got drunk was under the influence of my father who allowed me to get drunk as a teenager and never inhibited drinking and alcohol at all. First time that I got drunk, I was 13 under the supervision of my father and I threw up everywhere and I kept drinking and it was never off the cards because my father also drank and this is a very common story for most people. One parent or the other has a substance issue 
or an emotional addiction to one thing or another, and we inherit those stories. It's not about my particular family of origin story, it's merely illustrating that just because something's in the past doesn't mean it needs to be in the present, and the longer that we build a reputation with ourselves, the longer this is the key element. You need to build a reputation with yourself based on strong boundaries, confidently established, based on moments of stepping back and assessing where the boundary needs to be and going, hmm, I could probably do with a wall against alcohol, let's put that there. Okay, this kind of person in my life who takes three hours of my time and gives nothing back, I'm going to put a boundary over there as well. And progressively, if you imagine, you start to put out the wooden palisades that keep out the energetic invasions. And then as you get more and more comfortable with that standard, you start to develop the stone walls that are a bit stronger. The wood is out here, temporary. The stone walls here. So not only do I not drink, I don't go to bars or clubs not drinking there. I don't go to bars or clubs. Not spending three hours giving to a supposed friend who gives nothing back. I don't even spend 10 minutes doing that with people. Get stronger and stronger. The reputation that you develop with yourself enforces and reinforces a standard of self-worth, which is unquestionable. You develop the reputation that you want to maintain. And if you can just start with those simple things, if you can clearly discern, I don't poison myself with substance and I don't allow my energy to be taken by certain unpalatable individuals, let's say, or relationships, romantic relationships, which aren't a fit, those are the two main areas where people tend to trip up with their boundaries. It's consuming poison and it's allowing energetic drain. If you've got some of those principles in place in regards to family boundaries around communication, based on the feeling that you are worth so much and you're worth defending, you're worth protecting, you treat yourself like a valuable child, your own son or daughter, is so precious to you that you would do anything to establish a safe energetic sphere around them and no one gets access to their energy. If you have that feeling of robust, healthy, almost ferocious love, it will be quite easy to not go to the bar or say no to the friend who wastes your time. It will be quite easy to catch yourself at the moment when you've spent way too long scrolling on your phone or you're considering overeating to cope with an emotional issue to go, hmm, that's not a self-loving thing to do, and I'm not the kind of person who hurts myself in these ways, and it's a two-second process, and you choose the healthier option, which is, actually, I am still a little bit hungry, you know what, going to have another tall glass of water and a piece of organic fruit. It's nuance, and it's sophisticated approaches. The boundary question is something which is ever-shifting. Boundaries aren't always permanent. Some main boundaries will be permanent. I imagine both you and I can agree that we'd never take someone's life unless there is a situation where we need to defend ourselves or defend someone that we truly care about. The boundary is established that we'll never do that until there's a moment where there's so much pressure and we might have to do that. That's one of those morally tricky moments, but surely everyday life does not feel like a life and death decision between do I need to potentially risk going to jail? You can just control your phone usage. You're so capable, you're so incredibly in control, and you have so much agency over your everyday life. If you have certain morals and values and certain dreams of where you want to be in the future, you can let all of that perceived self-worth drain down into the present day. You can take the best of the past, but abandon so much of that family of origin story and establish a boundary worth maintaining because you believe that you are worth defending. There's so much more I could discuss about worthiness and deservingness. I've done a few videos on this before. If you want a few of those worthiness uh, videos, a few more of them, leave a comment in the comment section. I am making 500 videos, so I'm sure there's a few more of them to come, but leave a comment about the specific area of self-worth or self-esteem or worthiness that you might be struggling with or you think someone else might be struggling with. For the sake of this video, to wrap it up with a strong point, your boundaries are maintained when you care about yourself enough to maintain them. If your boundaries keep failing, or you fail to know what they might be, with the strongest sense of love that I can possibly bring through on a video, it's likely because you don't care about your, you, you just don't care about yourself enough to maintain it. I stumble as I'm saying it because I know it's a triggering topic, and I know that I need to watch for this in my own life. 
when I catch myself spending too long on the phone, when I catch myself spending too much time with someone who I know isn't giving back to me and is disrespecting my time and my energy. We realized that the boundary was betrayed just a little bit. It was bruised like a catapult in the wall. It hasn't fallen down. It's maybe a bit shaky at the foundation. And it's our job as a loving protector of all of that inner child energy and all of that future potential to just go back, establish it again, just pat down the wall and sand it over and get back into life. Don't let it become one catapult hit and do nothing about it. If you feel like your boundaries are being hit against by both yourself or someone else out there in the environment, you're very much in control to change this. And don't let anyone take that away from you. If unfortunately you were born into a family story where that wasn't encouraged as a default narrative, now's the time to change it. You don't need to maintain a family story of not being worth everything that you are. And that's the end of the video. There's the next video. I always do this. It's over here. You know what to do.